Welcome back to the channel where I go and actually give you my recommendations for streaming movie content right up front. And then I hope that you stick around to go and actually for me to tell you why I gave it those recommendations. So for Hitman on Netflix, I'm going to go and actually say if you're a target audience member, people that are into spy uh comedy action movies things of that nature i'm gonna go and actually say i think you should probably go and actually add this to watch within the next 30 days or so now for a casual viewer people that are not really into all that but you're just looking for seeing tuning in to see if this is something that you could go and actually vibe with i'm gonna say you can add it to your playlist to watch at your leisure now stay tuned for how and why i came up with those particular recommendations my name is gary johnson and my simple question for you is who is your hitman hitman is a crime comedy movie that premiered on netflix in june of 2024 it has a runtime of an hour and 55 minutes and it stars glenn powell as gary johnson adrea aranja or i totally murdered her name <laughs> as madison figueroa masters and austin emilio as jasper now imdb has the synopsis in this way a professor moonlighting as a hitman of sorts for his city police department descends into dangerous, dubious territory when he finds himself attracted to a woman who enlists his services. A real basic concept on there, nothing too complex or what have you. And when you go and actually really look at crime comedy movies, they're usually harmless kinds of fun. You're talking about movies like 21 Jump Street or True Lies. Those are fun kind of romps into like showing what comedies can do with that type of genre and go and actually make it fun. Then, but here's the thing, I don't really kind of go out of my way to see these kinds of films because for everyone that's like really good, there's some that suck like, you know, Holmes and Watson or Geely or something of that nature. So it's kind of like a half and half type of thing on here. I'm really going to classify myself as neither target audience for this because I'm not the one that you would seek out for this, but I'm not exactly a casual viewer because I recognize there's some really good ones out there. So this is a rare case where I'm gonna go and actually say that I'm on the fence. So I can be persuaded to be a target audience for this. I can also go and actually figure myself out this ain't for me at all. But the reason why I go ahead and actually put that out there for you is that I think you should always know where your reviewer is coming from. You should always know the slant before they go and actually give you the recommendations. In that, I go and actually watch exclusive streaming movies on streaming platforms i watch them so you don't have to and if you like how that sounds do me a favor click like share subscribe and now let's get into the review for the hitman so after watching hitman i can go ahead and actually tell you that what i go ahead and actually most relate this to as far as movies or content i've seen before i would say it reminds me kind of like a little bit of mr and mrs smith and night and day with Tom Cruise and uh, Cameron Diaz. So that's kind of like where my thoughts are as far as what elements and what kind of uh, movies you can kind of relate this to. Okay. So in the first act of this particular movie, the setup of who Gary is and his life is really kind of spelled out for you pretty well. Uh, it, it's sometimes it can be a little painful as some of the scenes kind of drag on and we go ahead and actually get a lot of narration from Gary and it kind of it dies out as the movie goes along but it's still there throughout the movie but narration as most people will go ahead and actually know is that narration is kind of the lazy way to go ahead and actually get out of things or what have you and to instead of you know show don't tell all that kind of good stuff and i don't always believe in that but it can be it can be very distracting to go ahead and actually just have it a lot in a movie or whatever and it got annoying here the position of gary's character as a philosophy professor and a part-time crime tech is just weird to me. Um, it, it would seem like a crime tech would go ahead and actually be one of those types of roles that would be, you, you'd want to have a full-time person or whatever. I mean, I guess people could go ahead and actually have gig economies and everything like that, but it's it's a very weird type of, of thing people do that. But then again, there's people that are crime junkies and things like that to spend time with that. So, you know, to each their own, but it, that was a weird dynamic for me. One, the initial setup, for how we could actually get to Gary kind of being, you know, this fake hitman or what have you, is kind of cumbersome. But once we get into it, the transitions of Gary going and actually taking on all these different identities and characters is absolutely brilliant. It's actually fun seeing him go ahead and actually do, and I'm telling you, he runs the gambit and gets all into character. It's really awesome. It's like going ahead and actually going behind the scenes and seeing somebody really creative of who really is a talented, you know, impressionist or whatever, do all these different things. And so with that in the first act in there, that was very entertaining. Now, in the second act is where we kind of go and actually meet Madison's character and 
her going ahead and actually creating, you know, uh, enlisted Gary services of him going actually being this uh, fake hitman and her coming across and, and things of that nature. So the the meeting on there, I can believe it. You know, it was believable. It was uh, definitely, obviously, the thing that kind of turns the movie on its ear and kind of everything devolves from that or whatever. So I could go and actually buy that. Uh, the aspect of, like, hiding identities and relationships seems to kind of make the, the police department really incompetent in this movie. And the reason why I bring it up is because, you know, it is a comedy drama or, excuse me, a, a comedy crime story. So while I can't suspend the disbelief a little bit, I do, I do get the feeling like we got a very dumb police department, at least in that particular section of the police department, that can't figure out some of these things that are going on or what have you. And it just, I don't know, it, it kind of strikes me as a little weird or what have you. That kid, it really in the second act isn't really that entertaining, that compelling. Outside of the romance budding between Gary and Madison, which is very much steamy. I'll give I'll give them that. Like both of them, you could see them being attractive and and all that. That was nice. Um, but the rest of like kind of the second act was kind of boring for me. Didn't have really too much engagement for me. And it was kind of like, eh, you know, some scenes were okay. Some of the scenes were just like blah, you know, what have you. When we go and actually get to the third act, the last act is crazy. Um, it really does kind of rest on the human uh, primary instincts and kind of who you want to be, who you are. It's it's always that aspect of it that really kind of nudges this movie into a different stratosphere. I would think that the movie be, the movie you think in and of itself is probably a little mediocre, if not for interjecting that of Gary being a philosophy professor and him interjecting some lessons within there that really make you go and actually think and then you know seeing it on film or whatever that was the intriguing aspect of things and we kind of see that start to come full circle in the third act well i'm not going to spoil anything i don't spoil anything on here i will just say for me the ending was uh too tidy it uh should have been a little bit more complex considering everything and how the story weighed out and things like that it just seemed like they just packaged up nice and, and tidy or whatever and i didn't like that aspect of it so it was what it was but that's kind of like the movie from you know from beginning to end or whatever my just initial thoughts or whatever um in regards to the things that i go ahead and actually grade out storytelling and acting all that kind of good stuff storytelling for me was about a b in this and the reason why i say it is you know the movie's interesting from the aspect of the comedy of the guy switching up uh from being uh the front man and it being a hitman front and all that kind of stuff and all the issues that come with it of you know different identities he has to take and the different situations that he's in and all that kind of stuff i think that was spot on love that aspect of it really goes ahead and actually gives you something to go ahead and actually uh really dig into now it's very much trope heavy and it's paced weirdly because going back and forth between like the movie of like the comedy and the crime drama that's going on in there interdispersed with the philosophy aspect of things the pacing is kind of look like all over the place with this one in there at times you'll find yourself bored at times you'll find yourself intrigued and at times you'll be like oh okay this is kind of cool and you know it's just a roller coaster of like will i do i want to watch this movie any further or oh give me more and so i just feel like the storytelling was just kind of uneven all over the place i like the thought exercises in here but it's weird to kind of get from the narration and the movie from this of kind of continuing to go ahead and actually do that for you and so it just it starts to become a little cumbersome i will say that um you do kind of see gary struggling uh between the two of being you know the fake hitman and who he really is and that aspect of the storytelling of kind of seeing him in that journey and things like that is very intriguing I, I very much like that as much as the story and around it is kind of weird the uh i think they designed the story very well to go ahead and actually identify the character and pull the, the character through all this different stuff on there to get you to where he's going to be at the end or what have you and i will also say that reading the article which i am going to go ahead and actually include a link to the article that this whole film is based on i'm going to link that down below so that you could go ahead and actually read it because it's actually based off of an article that was uh i in regards to the way that this film was based off of an article uh, written in Texas Monthly, and this is a whole story that I was told in there, like a short story type of thing, I think this is a great adaptation, and that's why I kind of boost up the storytelling to a B, because in recreating that aspect of it, what they were going for, and what this story meant, or what have you, I think they did a very good job on that, and like I said, the, while the pacing can be all over the place, they, they do get the point across on there, and you kind of feel at the end, like, oh, okay, um, even if it didn't end the way that I may have wanted to, I like the watching the story happen. 
in regards to acting i'm also going to go and actually give that a b now glenn powell is pretty good as gary in this you can see him make the transition from being a recluse to being a more outgoing uh person but he still has that conscience in him when he goes and actually goes on you know the different hitman aspects of things he doesn't kind of lose himself or anything like that and so i think his acting and conveying was really good i honestly cannot recall seeing him in anything that i can remember um and i don't know if his default dialect is the way that it is in this movie but here he he almost seems like a knockoff matthew mcconaughey to me and so uh, that could be good or bad you know the, you know imitation is a serious form of flattery and i think he was very good at it it's just i would like to see a little bit more of him versus kind of doing what i feel is like a pale comparison and things like that but overall i did like uh his acting and he was solid in this um I liked but didn't love the character of uh, Madison in here. Um, first of all, she definitely has looks and sexiness, so there's no problem there at all. Um, but the acting was kind of like a hit or miss for me. Like when she's supposed to be sympathetic, I wasn't buying it as much. But when she's supposed to go ahead and actually be more of the character that she ended up being towards the end of the movie, I was believing that. And that seemed more to be true, authentic or what have you. And so from that aspect of it, she kind of grew on me as the movie went along or what have you. And so um, for her... She wasn't as consistent all the way through, but maybe that's just the way that they wrote the character. But I liked, uh, ended up liking her at the end, but in the beginning, it was kind of rough. Anything else on there? Supporting characters were okay. Nothing was great, nothing horrible, anything like that. Um, also, Amelia was good as the unlikable Jasper character. Uh, I think that his character was kind of like one of those ones where you're just like, uh, at some point, you know, you kind of actually cheer from a little bit. Other points, you're like, oh my God, you are swarmy or what have you. So overall, I, I think the character was serviceable and decent. Uh, and everybody else was just, you know, okay in their roles with very different levels of, of degree or whatever so i was going to say acting about a b for me so last few things i'm going to actually mention on this movie is that you know one because it was based off of a texas monthly article written by uh skip hollander hollandsworth um it's not a true story they all because they almost insinuate that it's a true story but it's just based off of an article that was written in texas monthly and it's a good story don't get me wrong but nothing that i found in my research says that it's a it's based off of a true story now if it is you guys can feel free to correct me in, in the bottom or what have you and give me some sources or anything like that but i couldn't find anything that said it was, it was a true story but it was very much intriguing and i liked it uh, the lessons of id and ego with the, within the context of gary's philosophy um were fun and really could go and actually be a movie on its own it's almost like um you, you do they do this a lot with movies that have like mercenaries or um assassins or anything like that nowadays on that whether you go and actually talk about um uh, smoking aces or you go ahead and actually talk about uh john wick or you know just just so many different types of movies where there's these do's and don'ts and, and all that kind of stuff on there and this is another one that's a little bit it's on a deeper level because it's more humanistic in regards to just overall platform it's not necessarily about hitman or anything like that but i do think it's a very intriguing concept and philosophy and i like that um glenn powell and uh the young lady that plays madison uh they steam it up when they're together i can't go and actually tell you enough of like that's one of those scenes where i'm like you know, some scenes like that, you go and actually take it like, oh, that's a little too soap opera, or that's a little CW-ish and things like that you don't want to see. And then there's other ones that are like, oh, that's like porno. This is actually kind of like the nice little in-between on there. It's hot enough that gets you like, you know, hot bothered, but it's not gratuitous and ridiculous uh, and things like that. So I, I thought it was really nice. So they're, they seem to be play well off of each other. Um, and I love the various different characters that Gary um, portrays as a fake hit man. Um, it's one of the highlights of the movie that just kind of gets you. So those are my intangibles or what have you. So really just going to actually recap it is that if you are a main target audience member for this, that you like um, action, crime, comedies, and things of that nature, what have you, uh, I'm going to tell you that you should definitely go ahead and actually watch it within the first 30 days. Reason being is that Netflix is always big on anything that's watched within the first 30, 30 days after its release. They deem it as a success and, and having all those downloads and watch hours and things like that whatever so you want to watch it as soon as possible and i'm going to say that this is one of those um, because it has solid acting um solid storytelling our staples with good human late human nature lessons uh interwoven between the comedy aspects are far and few in between so don't look for it as much a comedy they're there but they're not prevalent or anything like that i personally like feeling figuring out um what would end up being a result of everything that happened within the film and while i'm not a fan of the way that it actually ended the journey was very entertaining i recommend watching it sooner rather than later just to go ahead and actually make sure that you get those watch hours in there now, for casual audience members, I'm not going to say that you need to watch it in the first 30 days because I don't think it's an impactful movie like that. But I do think it's one that you would actually find entertaining. You should add it to your playlist to watch when you have nothing else to watch. Um, 
honestly outside of like if you're watching it for comedy you're not going to get a lot out of it from that aspect of it but if you're looking for something that's a little bit more complex it's just in a goofy crime drama movie or whatever this will be it. it's going to service you pretty well the leads are attractive the story is solid and it really makes it make you think about who you are and if you're living in your own truth and that's i really think that the main crux of this particular story and why i really liked it so there you go that's my review of hitman on netflix check it out Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, you actually sat here and watched this entire review. I appreciate you. Much love. Do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe, just to show me that love. Or even more, you can go ahead and actually watch one of these other shows and reviews that the algorithm sees that you'll think that you'll like of mine. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.